feel like things have been awkward between us, don't you? I'm okay with it being awkward between us. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. Today, Brian Mitchell, Ian Arbuck, and Ryan Rampersad will be sharing their experiences with Mr. Robot Season 1. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO18. So, I know I watched Mr. Robot Season 1 within the last week. I think Ian did some, and Brian... Uh, it's hope. been since last summer for me, so a long time. Yeah, I I watched uh, on average like two to three per day uh, over the last week just to just to try and keep up with you, Brian. Because <laughs> <laughs> so this is Saturday, and last Sunday I watched four episodes. Last Monday I watched four episodes, and last Tuesday I watched the last two. So I. I, I plowed through. Man, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I finished with the last episode of season one uh, this morning. So I don't think I've ever sat on my couch as much as I have last weekend. <laughs> this last week. And I've only, I've only been in my house for a couple weeks now, a few weeks now, but TV TV shows will do that. It Man, I it really drove home to me how unnatural it feels in my adult life to binge watch something like that. Like, that's just not how I operate anymore. It feels like a, a waste of time, but I'm yeah. interested in, and I want to do it at the same time. <laughs> well, I remember you know? when I did it last summer, I, I was, I, I sort of had a uh, light week at work, and so I, I would come home early and then watch dozens of minutes of content before getting interrupted, <laughs> and then having to go and off and do something and then come back. And so I've basically forgotten all of it. Okay, well, well hopefully hope- we'll be able to fill you in as we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know the general idea. So let's yeah actually let's let's give people the general idea of Mr. Robot. So it's it's a very, it's a very modern day like hacking themed uh you know, anti society kind of uh it's it's almost it's in a lot of ways it's like Fight Club, right? Because right off the bat they introduce the goals of this hacking group as like we're going to erase all debt. Um, the the main character is addressing the audience directly as like an, an unseen companion, you know, who he's um, he's sharing these 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 experiences with, um, and uh, and and like the creators of the show are, are well aware that that they're making a modern day Fight Club because uh, <laughs> late in the season they actually used the same song as Fight Club used uh, right at the end of the at the end of the movie. Um, where is my mind? And when I heard that in the show, I was like, "Oh yeah, okay, yep, they know exactly what they're doing." Um, but yeah, it's real. It's really edgy, um, kind of dark. A lot of a lot of uncomfortable themes in it. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't know much about the show when I started watching. I just knew that I'd seen some screen caps from security researchers on Twitter, and I'd heard things about it. And so I'm like, "All right, I'll watch it. It's gonna be like a hacking show. Cool." sci-fi hooray tech modern stuff and then it got it was way more intense and yeah different different themes came up that i wasn't expecting when i had a, when i started watching the show i wasn't sure about what i was going to get into mm-hmm. i thought yeah so the the like tagline that they give you uh when you're like looking at the show on amazon is our democracy has been hacked and it has very little to do with like hack it, like rigging election results or anything like that. Well, so, that does not sound like an accurate description. That that's just how um, you know show descriptions work on sites these days. You know, if you oh, look at sure. if you look at Netflix descriptions for movies and things, they are not accurate at all. Mm-mm. And and I feel like if somebody was paraphrasing, they could easily get our democracy is hacked from Mr. Robot's probably actual description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh well. So don't judge uh, a book by its cover, right? Or Amazon description. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing. So being being a hacking focused uh, show, and being computer science students, you guys, how well do we feel that it uh, that it it portrayed, um, you know, hacking techniques and. I don't know how deep any of us are into hacking culture, but... So I followed security researchers, which is the uh, more uh, cor- politically correct name to call them, um, <laughs> on Twitter for 
gosh, five, six, seven years. Basically, when I started jailbreaking, I followed these people on Twitter and then through them have followed more and a wider variety of people. Um, as far as I can tell, the show gets most of it pretty much right. Um, I know there is a reference at one point to um, Elliot saying, you know, he can't just do something in a day. He's got to research. And, you know, mm-hmm, I think a lot mm-hmm. of ha- a lot of hacking is just hours and hours and hours of trying things and routinely changing something, try again, just to investigate to see what what you're trying to get into, because it's it's not just hack it, I'm in. It's all right, what is this? What is this? What is this? How do they work together? What versions are they at? You know, what is what is documented, what isn't? Do you have to reverse engineer something? And I think that was portrayed. Now pretty pretty briefly, but it was mentioned at least in the mm-hmm. show. Yeah, I'm pretty much at the same point too. I think all of the tech stuff is pretty good. But I would say that the other things that went around the hacking, such as the uh, amount of drug use, don't necessarily <laughs> think that it has any correlation with actual actual hacking. So, you know, if you want to hack something, it doesn't mean you need to take all the drugs. Right, yeah. Th- yeah, those are definitely separate themes in the in the movie, in the show. Yep. Yeah. And I, I thought of a few other places where hacking terms where i think they got right they mentioned using i think it was aes 256 Mm -hmm. and that's pretty unbeatable at the current day he mentioned wpa2 being unhackable which is also correct um there is um how did those those terminal command lines look to you guys because i i have not used i didn't look i mean they were using ftp which doesn't make sense i will say why would you use ftp that is like you use SFTP, but <laughs> um, S being secure. So I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, um, I don't really remember it, so I can't say for sure. Um, it probably wasn't as exciting as... If I were re- re-watching it, it probably wouldn't be as cool the second time. Things looked pretty accurate. I remember trying to see at least a little bit, and it looked pretty, pretty legitimate. I don't... I'm not the the knower of every command line utility so i don't know yeah. all of these but yeah it seemed to make some sense um the two-factor authentication was at least in one episode important where a password was behind a two-factor key and so we had to to get someone to go into another room and then run in and get the key and then he had a minute and a half to use that key before it expired and what kind of 2fa system has a minute and a half expiry it's 30 seconds. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Pro- really? They, now, I, I'm thinking, you know, they, they changed that just so it would fit for the show. Yeah, that's 30 clearly seconds what isn't they did. really. Yeah, because 30 seconds makes more sense because that is short enough to prevent most things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One, of the, uh, um, one of the things that I usually keep an eye out for in whenever I'm watching any movie, whether it's, you know, supposed to be like a focus on computers or not is like what, what brands are being shown in there, you know, what, like, um, and it didn't seem like they had any kind of preference, you know, it was actually a realistic blend of, you know, some people are using, um, MacBooks, some people are using Samsung phones, some people are, um, and, uh, the, the one, I the, saw an iPhone at one point, I yeah. think there was some HP, some Dell, the one thing that Computers. I that I noticed that was really weird was um, Tyrell, the uh, the executive at uh, Evil Corp, um, when he like takes out his phone, uh, he <laughs> he had a Samsung phone, and the stuff that was on the screen was definitely like stock Android with the actual like on screen software buttons and i was oh, like that's hilarious what kind of, i was like what kind of robbery that like i've seen cyanogen mod <laughs> on a samsung phone and it did not have those buttons so i have no idea what he was that's doing funny there. <laughs> yeah usually i'm well, really critical that... of those kinds of things when the they change the operating system that really should be there mm-hmm. but i think they made uh enough unique screens that it didn't look that bad usually yeah yeah it, yeah like for the for the vast majority of the time it it was totally totally believable yeah yeah i have one more note on hacking things and he elliot had had called someone to get some information out of him like i don't know pet name maiden name things like that and i think that was that was a good call because there are rainbow tables out there which just take you know the most common passwords or password dumps from hacked hacked organizations and then you can kind of 
morph those around using common common rules along with things like pet names and whatnot and mm-hmm. that was that was good and he, i think he mentioned you know he's talking to the he's narrating so talking to us saying something like um you know they're people over 40 or 50 or something they'll they'll just use really insecure weak passwords and, and so he was trying to get get at someone through that yeah way. And, the, and the line that he said was really funny to me because he was like he he was unsuccessful at cracking this guy's password and he was like that's impossible. This guy's too old to have like a unique, secure password for all of his accounts. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's because he so, uses LastPass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so actually, actually, yeah. Um, during each uh, episode, I I decided to write down um one of the lessons that you can take away from the episode, and most of these lessons are like totally banal, like have nothing to do with the main point of the of the the story but uh um so in episode one my lesson was use randomly generated pass passwords kids good advice episode two walk your dog regularly or it will poop on your bed mixed advice episode three (laughs) do you have any experience with that ryan uh well when i uh, when i work a lot which i do uh roxy my cute dog will not poop in my bed however it will poop in the bathroom where a dog should poop (laughs) Um, episode three, hmm. if you go to dinner at your boss's place, it will probably be really awkward. Probably. Probably. Episode- oh, that was so, that was the, at the dinner scene where he, where he said, you know, he was there with, oh gosh, what's her name? What's her name? I'm going to get this. I have IMDb open for this very reason. Charlene? Um, Charlene. Yes. Yes. When Elliot is at the table with Charlene and they're like, oh, how long have you been together? And he just says, oh, today. Yep. Today. <laughs> just like yep. that second or two of. Total awkward silence. Mm-hmm. Uh, episode four, don't do drugs. You don't say. Yeah. Episode five, and this is one of my favorite ones. Social engineering is the most powerful hacking. Episode six, don't pick up thumb drives from the parking lot and plug them into your work computer or any computer for that matter. Hmm. You know, it's one of my hobbies. I loved, I love that they had that in the show because that is one of like those very well-known like things that that people do to try and get into a network is just like scattering around flash drives in a parking lot and there were so many in one small area <laughs> yeah, it looked that, so suspicious well, that made it so obvious to, to incidentally um the place i'm working at right now the client site um if you try to plug in a non-authorized flash drive so one without a certificate already on it it won't hmm. the operating system will reject it hmm. won't even hmm. mount Oh, hey, speaking of thumb drives, uh, Ryan, I think I still have one of your thumb drives from your workplace here at my house. That's hilarious. You can keep it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's formatted as a bootable uh, Windows because I needed to install Windows 10 on another computer. That means it's secure. There you go. Uh, episode 7. You have to be careful when seducing people not to get too carried away. Hmm. Episode 8. Time is money. Episode 9, Stealing from Pricks is okay. <laughs> and episode 10, if you need to hide your fingerprints, just throw a big party at your place. That is that the was, best I lesson. really loved that. That was, that, was, that was really smart. Anybody mm-hmm. could be there. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, speaking of the party, actually, um, did you guys take a look at what was written on the flyers for that party? No. Um, so it... it, it it had a very specific wording on there that was a like a direct reference to um Doctor Strange Love. Uh and the, and this show mm. was just full of subtle little references like that um to other things that would make sense for somebody in, you know, in that situation to be be making references to. Um so I think that that like brought it up to a whole nother level of like believability for me. Um was just the the way that they they didn't they didn't like just take things that you know th- that the publisher of this show owned. You know, like sometimes you see that uh, you know Disney movies will reference other Disney movies, but won't reference like movies from other publishers. Um, it seems like the creators of D- Mr. Robot like just just were grabbing everything that they could from all over the place. Hmm. I did not catch that. Um, I mean, there yeah. was also like you know in the in the flashback scene uh, in the early '90s, they you know they were like, oh, what movie should we go and see? And they ended up going to see Pulp Fiction, which uh, makes perfect sense because that was a huge movie. Yeah, back then. I had a All right, few. So, or, yeah, go ahead. 
Um, yeah, after this kind of episode summary and things, um, I'm wondering a couple things that I had about the show. So how how well will this show age? You know, there are some pop culture references, security practices. It's very much the mid-20-teens where you have smartphones are out and um, security is where it was slash is today. You know, how, how do you think this show is going to, to look in 10, 15 years? Like, I guess like most any science fiction show, it's probably going to look really old, but... Yeah, but it's not look. It's not going to look silly the way that like a science fiction show that's trying to predict the future would look. That's true. You know, so yeah. it's not, it's not like I'm watching Back to the Future and they're in the year 2016 or 2015 or whatever, and it's like, okay, this looks nothing like the 2015 that I lived through. Um, whereas, like, you know, I I I watch Mr. Robot and it's like, yeah, that that's totally believable. Um, so I think as a, maybe in the future it'll be seen as like a nice period piece. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it, it, it's an exaggerated period piece, but yes, pretty much I think so. Well, of course, as it's far fi- as I know, fiction, Evil Corp be. doesn't exist, but right, but they do. They there reference were... other other companies, right? Because like there were the one of those executives who was talking about like uh, going and working for either Apple or Google, and it's like you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I guess they had to come up with you know this this new company that doesn't exist in real life so that they can just have it be as evil as possible and not offend somebody really badly right yeah like getting get in trouble for uh for libel or whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean like they yeah they, they were they were just referencing regular stuff in real life yeah now the other thing i had was so throughout the season there are people following elliot you know dressed in suits carrying a briefcase are these just random people on the street that he thinks are following him or are they actually following him it's it's the lines kind of blurred especially in, in episode 9 and 10 where we realize that he's he's hallucinating some things you know mm-hmm. he's not a reliable narrator <laughs> no yeah um well i think it, it definitely depends on the time right because there was at least once where he did get picked up by people in suits who were following him um, but then there were other times where he thought he was being followed and then they directly like, uh, revealed that that person was just, just happened to be standing on the same platform, you know? Um, yeah. but, but other times they leave it ambiguous. Um, and I think that's okay that, to leave it ambiguous because that, you know, if we didn't have that mystery, then, uh, then that would kind of break down a lot of the, the allure of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In general, that's kind of how I feel about the end of the show too like once i learned the big big uh mystery mm-hmm. the yeah, i just i just didn't really care that much anymore <laughs> okay because that i mean when when they then when they give us that big plot twist uh that that was when i kind of came back to the show mentally um because there was there was kind of a lull in the middle of the season where i felt like it was just kind of being edgy for the sake of edginess you know Mm -hmm. and i and i didn't really feel like anything of substance was happening um you know like i think i think it was mostly that really long stretch where we had to watch him like struggle with 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 like going through withdrawal from the drugs Mm -hmm. uh and i was just like this is not interesting to me um but then then they you know picked it up again with with more conventionally interesting plot lines you know so like how much how much do we want to address the uh plot twist here do, uh i think do we want to give people a big warning and then uh the rest of the episode we'll just like know like we won't hold anything back does that sound good to you guys works for me okay. <laughs> all right so so, so yes yeah, so, so if you don't want spoilers for this show uh don't listen past this point uh and uh and have fun. I, actually, let's let's give some final like brief thoughts for the people who are about to leave the episode. Bye, people. Um, do, do you, well, do you do you think that this is uh you know a, a show worthy of people to, of seeking out? I think some people can watch the show and have a fun time, but I think there are a lot of normal people who will won't get it and won't care and will be bored out of their mind. I enjoyed it. I've always been interested in hacking things, more like the culture and the processor on that so i i really enjoyed it the the drug use and kind of extreme edginess wasn't my most favorite thing but it was it was kind of fun actually um tyrell and his wife he he was speaking swedish and she was speaking danish and it was kind of fun to have that yeah well he's swedish and she's danish i think they were both maybe 
play, pl- using a little bit of an accent on top of whatever to make some hodgepodge of a language. But um, yeah, it was it was interesting. I think I think they're trying to be more close to Danish. But um, yeah, it was quite interesting to hear that. I'm like, gosh, what are they speaking? Because it it didn't sound like when he was speaking, it didn't. It sounded kind of like Danish, but the pronunciation wasn't right because he's Swedish. So yeah, yeah, I yeah, because I was listening to that and trying to like I was doing my best to try and hear the Swedish words that they supposedly were saying. Um, and yeah, I could not understand her at all. So if she was speaking Danish, then that <laughs> that explains it. Um, I could definitely like I could pick out individual words more easily when Tyrell was speaking. And I could pick it up more when she was speaking. So uh, okay, yeah. there we go. <laughs> since you since you've been learning Danish and I've been learning Swedish, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess my final thoughts on the show would be: um, for one thing, if you if you enjoyed Fight Club, uh, this I think you'll enjoy this show. Um, but also, yeah, if you if you enjoy computers and hacking and that kind of thing, um, then this is a good show to watch because it gets things right. Uh, and yeah, if you're not if you're not into like dark, edgy stuff, then just steer clear. You're not <laughs> you're not gonna have a good time. And I think that's what I what I was trying to point out. Like it's too it has too much of that for most normal people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a niche a niche show. Yep. Yep. All right. Who wants to say the big uh, the big spoiler? Mr. Robot is the main character. Sort of, I guess. Oh, sort oh, of? yeah. But well, also his father. Like yes. the the image of Mr. Robot is his father, but he doesn't realize it till episode eight very end no yeah wait seven i think episode yeah, seven something like that no i think it was the beginning of episode nine where the end of nine he realizes it's his dad because he's at the graveyard at the end of eight he realizes that that um shayla is that her name uh no sorry darlene, darlene is uh his sister mm-hmm. and that's the end of eight yeah so okay. so 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 that reveal was like i'm not sure if they did this on purpose or not but i got confused because um, so they reveal that Darlene is his sister, right? And then he like rushes home because he's like, "What else have I been forgetting?" And he and he goes and he finds that blank CD, um, that well unlabeled CD, uh, and and it has all those pictures of his father. And I thought that they were going for a direct like Fight Club like thing where he like he is literally Christian Slater, right? Like that that the Mister mm. Robot character was literally him, and I was like, "Wow, okay, this is weird because he's way older." Uh, it, it you know, and and then and then all of a sudden, uh, Mister Robot shows up at his door, and they reveal it's his dad, and I'm like, "Okay, okay, so that makes some sense." And then they hold off on revealing uh, that he's actually dead until the next episode. So it was, it yeah, was like I a, that it was, was like a I thought that was reveal. really cool. Yeah. yeah. It made the last few episodes really, really interesting to watch. I, I, it, I think for me, it was the opposite. It made me so disinterested. It was just completely <laughs> senseless. So first of all, let's have this guy who's a super hacker, I guess, and let's have him just be literally crazy and have that somehow a part of his character. And then let's have him imagine his father who he forgot, which is ridiculous, because how? why did he forget? We don't know. Because the show doesn't bother to tell you, except for the absurd amount of drugs he pumps into himself every day. Pointless. Still bitter. <laughs> it's been nine months. I'm still angry. I'm really curious where they're going to go in season two with this. Because it seems the only real hanger at the end of the season is what happened to Tyrell. Was that mm-hmm. Mr. Robot killing him? Did he run away? You know, what what, what happened there? It did so so here's here's what that big reveal did for me. It made me start to wonder what other things in the show might not be as they seem, right? You know, cuz I was like I I started at, like thinking about in my mind all of the interactions that he had had with the other members of F society and trying to figure out like uh, are they real or did he just imagine them? Is it just he and Darlene or is, you know, um and um 
Yeah, so like Ty- Tyrell, for example, as well. When when uh, Tyrell's gone for the entire like last episode, and Elliot's trying to find him, I was like, was Tyrell real? Was he imagined? Was you know? Um, so it 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 really it gives the show the room. <laughs> Once they break that line, you know, once they step over that line, it gives them the room to do almost anything they want to and explain it as it was all in Elliot's mind. I don't um, like that. I think that's it's it's bad. It's cheap. There's no reason. It it devalues all of the technical uh, value that they gained in the show. Mm, you know, mm. it's like um, so like here, let's explore the human condition of a hacker. Let's explore why people do these things. Let's explore what they're trying to solve in the world. Oh, but drugs. But crazy, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, I wasn't, I'm not the hugest fan of all the drug use. At first, I'm like, all right, well, he's doing some drugs on the side, but he's taking the anti-withdrawal stuff at the same time, so it's probably going to be fine. And then it just spirals. And yeah, definitely not my favorite thing about the show. That's why number four is don't do drugs. Yeah, don't do drugs. Specifically, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you've convinced yourself that you are not an addict, you're probably an addict. <laughs> if you've given yourself like a, an exact mathematical formula for for determining whether you're an addict or not, uh, you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> well, at at the end, he was having withdrawal because he stopped after taking a lot more in the last you know, the few days before that. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, did you another uh, another thing that was kind of cluing the viewer in on something? bigger was going on was in episode seven when Angela and Darlene were at the dance lesson they Mm -hmm. clearly knew each other Mm -hmm. and I'm like whoa because that was the first time we'd like seen them interact really yeah and because there was the point where Angela was shouting up into the apartment and Darlene was in there because um, Elliot was trying to hack the prison Mm -hmm. and you know we didn't see them interact but Right, because they, you know, they would have was, known each other. Elliot was trying to prevent Angela from coming up there. I, I think, well, he well, he was trying to prevent her from coming up there because there were the thugs there, right? Um, yeah. But I think even if Darlene had just been there, he would have been trying to prevent her because, in his mind at that time, Darlene was just a member of F Society, and yeah, and they couldn't be seen together because there, you know, there was no reason for them to be interacting out in the real world. Definitely, yeah. How do you so Ryan I'm curious to know how you feel about the fact that Elliot directly addresses the the audience um and makes frequent references to the fact that like you know well we're not real so you know why is he even talking to us and um, so, stuff So so like I that. think I do like that because I think it's amusing because um before the twist where he's the person he thinks he isn't mm-hmm. um you know, he's just, like, sort of crazy. You know, like, all main characters of shows talk to people. You know, breaking the fourth wall, it's fine. It's a thing that, um, you know, TV does, movies do. You know, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But then, after he's uh, the crazy person with two people in him, um, then or maybe... Or four, depending on how you're counting. <laughs> yeah, well, right. Uh, so then, you wonder, so, was he imagining another person also the entire time, and then talking to them and where them? You don't know? Yeah. Yeah. Or does it yeah. matter at all? No, probably not. I thought so. So when um, when Mr. Robot uh, was trying, you know, was trying to tell Elliot to stop talking to us, and he was saying like they can't, they can't do anything to help you. They can't change anything. Uh, it got me wondering like, mm, are they going to do something uh, in the future where like you know audience participation kind of thing where we get to like vote on? Oh, I hope not. On, you know, like <laughs> that would be crazy. That'd be awful. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you guys so, uh, are on the opposite end of the spectrum so there. on your um w- what you would do is they would if you voted this way skip episode six and if you voted this way jump to episode eight. Oh, i think it would just have to be like a, they aggregate all the votes and then no they, yeah. they just produce both paths and then you get to pick so what you oh maybe this is uh what happens in the telltale games version of <laughs> mr oh Robot. okay yeah there you go <laughs> that would mm. Hmm, that'd be interesting. I would play that. Well, I mean, basically, what you would be doing is is trying to make your drug meter go up <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> drug meter. And then to get it to go down, you hack something. So I guess. Wait, isn't that Ingress? Uh, Ryan, how many drugs were you doing while playing Ingress? None. Because I don't think that was part of the game. 
I don't know. You have to collect XM. Isn't it a drug? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> so, so it sounds like Brian and I uh, are definitely into watching the second season. Ryan, are you interested at all? Um, well, I was so interested about a month ago when I purchased the Blu-ray, so yes. Oh, hey. Well, maybe I have to come over to your house or something. I'll just give it to you. I don't need it. Oh, okay. Cool. So you're, are, you're not going to watch season two? I'll watch it someday. <laughs> okay. You know, like, I, I just, I, I have had enough time to think about what I liked about the show and what I didn't like about the show, and I can't imagine them doing anything super different in season two, mm-hmm. and they've even lost the split personality surprise and now what well the first one right sure yeah that's, that's true it's true where yeah where where do they go from here um cuz i mean they they achieved their goal of erasing all of the of evil corpse records um they they've revealed his his multiple personalities um yeah, what like I guess I guess there's some unanswered threads on Angela's part because she's working at Evil Corp, but you know she has reservations about that, obviously, and um, so you know what's she going to do there? Um, the CEO of Evil Corp doesn't seem super concerned, but that just might be a facade. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I we're... think I think there's something larger going on with Angela and Evil Corp mm-hmm. that Angela doesn't quite realize. I don't know. I think. There'll be more in with that. I bet we'll see Tyrell in season two. I'm sure. Yeah. That, um, Do you think he's, he pivots and becomes the main character? I think he'll be more involved with Elliot for sure. Mm. It's too bad. I was, I was definitely expecting to see more of him. Like, I was, I was, I was expecting to see a lot of him in episode 10, you know? Because, like, they went down to the uh, F Society clubhouse uh at the end of season as the end, as end of episode 9 and uh so i was expecting him to contribute to the plans in some way um uh, but we still don't know what happened during that time period <laughs> yeah i'm curious how they'll take the show for season 2 mhm mhm yeah i hope it's not just going to be evil corp chasing after elliot but that, we'll yeah see. that wouldn't be very interesting um Let's see who who was it who figured out his name? Somebody had figured out his name. Oh, right, it was the guy with the who used to have the dog, uh, <laughs> who was trying yeah. to implicate him for for identity theft and stuff. But I don't think I that think that's going to go there'll anywhere. There'll be there'll be the continued storyline of suing Evil Corp from Angela. Mm-hmm. But but working for Evil Corp at the same time. Yeah, that's going to be an issue, I think. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, it's it's so hard to predict what they're going to do, which on one hand is frustrating, but it also makes it like uh more it gives me more of a reason to watch, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes and no. You could also just read the synopsis right now cuz season 2's <laughs> been out for 6 months, 8 months. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I think he, so okay, here's 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 how I view watching season 2. Uh I am interested enough to watch it if i can get it for like no additional cost to myself um but if i never watch it then you know i there there was enough closure at the end of season one for me to not have regrets about about not continuing that's pretty much how i feel there you go. yeah minus 24 dollars yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't you didn't Same, think that through but... before spending the 24 dollars <laughs> eh, it's fine same here but i will be watching season two and I didn't pay for it on Blu-ray. Hmm. Hacker. Hmm. Suspicious. <laughs> Hacks. Oh man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a hack. That's what a hacker would say. So I agree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. I think that about does it for our thoughts. Unless there's anything else. Nope. That's that's about all I have. Um, it's. Uh... I mean, it's it's a very like modern show, you know, because they they did a uh, just a ten episode run, which seems you know we seem to be kind of merging the the whole concept of like TV shows and movies. Yeah, I like um, that approach. So I'm not surprised that like a spiritual successor today to Fight Club is is not a movie, but a TV show with with like ten episode seasons. 
Um, well, season two has twelve episodes. Ooh, man, they're they're, they're breaking tradition longer. there. <laughs> tradition from one show or one season of a show. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. if you if you discount every scene with drug use, I mean, and 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 over edginess, <laughs> you can you can get it down to about eight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then if you play it at 1.1 times speed, you can get through it a little faster, <laughs> There too. you go. Please don't tell me that you did that. Did you do that, Brian? I also truncated the silence between people's words. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch TV shows like I listen to podcasts. No. Good, good. Oh, man, that would be unbelievable. All right. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, hopefully you uh, you were very informed about... about uh, about this show um if you have any ideas for other things for us to review remember we don't just do uh tv shows we also do like movies and games and uh software and hardware and all sorts of stuff um so if you, if you got something that you want us to review let us know or if you have something that you want to review uh with us then uh also let us know you can contact us on twitter at the nexus tv um, or by email at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Uh, I've been Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck or at my website at ianrbuck.com. I am Brian Mitchell. You can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or my website at brianm.me. And you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. Have a good one. And watch out for one. cars. <laughs> <laughs>